The DNA double helix contains two linear sequences of the letters A, C, G, and T, which carry coded instructions. Transcription of DNA begins with a bundle of factors assembling at the start of a gene to read off the information that will be needed to make a protein. The blue molecule is unzipping the double helix and copying one of the two strands. The yellow chain sneaking out of the top is a close chemical cousin of DNA called RNA. The building blocks to make the RNA enter through an intake hole. They are matched to the DNA letter by letter to copy the gene. When the RNA copy is complete, it snakes out into the outer part of the cell. Then all the components of a molecular factory called a ribosome lock together around the RNA. It translates the genetic information in the RNA into a string of amino acids that will become a protein. Special transfer molecules, the green triangles, bring each amino acid to the ribosome. Inside the ribosome, the RNA is pulled through like a tape. There are different transfer molecules for each of the 20 amino acids shown as small red tips. The code for each amino acid is read off the RNA three letters at a time and matched to three corresponding letters on the transfer molecules. The amino acid is added to the growing protein chain and after a few seconds the protein starts to emerge from the ribosome. Ribosomes can make many proteins, it just depends what genetic message you feed into the RNA. Using computer animation based on molecular research, we are now able to see how DNA is actually copied in living cells. You are looking at an assembly line of amazing miniature biochemical machines that are pulling apart the DNA double helix and cranking out a copy of each strand. The DNA to be copied enters the production line from bottom left. The whirling blue molecular machine is called helicase. It spins the DNA as fast as a jet engine as it unwinds the double helix into two strands. One strand is copied continuously and can be seen spooling off to the right. Things are not so simple for the other strand because it must be copied backwards. It is drawn out repeatedly in loops and copied one section at a time. The end result is two new DNA molecules. So this is a single chromosome, and you have two strands of DNA in each chromosome. One is bundled up into one sausage, the other strand uh, is bundled up to the other sausage. These things that look like whiskers that are sticking out from either side are the dynamic scaffolding of the cell. Um, they're called microtubules, but the name's not so important. But what we're going to focus on is this red region. I've labeled it right here. And it's the interface between the dynamic scaffolding and the chromosomes. It is obviously central to the movement of the chromosomes. We have no idea, really, as to how it's achieving that movement. We've been studying this thing called the kinetic core for over 100 years with intense study. And we're still just beginning to discover what it's all about. It is made up of about 200 different types of proteins, thousands of proteins in total. It is a signal broadcasting system. It broadcasts through chemical signals, telling the rest of the cell when it's ready, when, when it feels that everything is aligned and ready to go uh, the, for the separation of the chromosomes. It is able to couple onto the growing and shrinking microtubules. It's transiently, it's, it's, it's involved with the growing of, of the microtubules, and it's able to transiently couple onto them. It's also a tension sensing system. It's able to feel when the cell is ready, when, when the chromosome is correctly positioned. It's turning green here because it, it feels that everything is just right. And you'll see that this one little last bit that's still remaining red, and it's walked away down the microtubules. That is the signal broadcasting system sending out the stop signal, and it's walked away. I mean, it's that mechanical. It's molecular clockwork. This is how you work at the molecular scale.